Okay. I think that plop means she's done. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Happy belated 4th of July. Hope you are all safe. I saw some people's fireworks got out of hand a little bit, but oh well. This morning's um, devotion I had for one of my devotion books I thought might be a nice way to um, start our morning only because we've had an awful lot of rain, haven't we? Yeah. And I know for some it's been life-threatening. Certainly crops have gone underwater. Some people have lost crops already for the year. But my devotion this morning read, and it's called Problems Happen. First John 5, 5. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. You'll never have a problem-free life, ever. You'll never drift off to sleep on the wings of this thought, my, today came and went with no problems in the world. This headline will never appear in the paper. We have only good news to report. You might be elected as president. You might discover a way to email pizza and become a billionaire. You might be called out of the stands to pinch hit when your team is down to its final out of the World Series, hit a home run, and have your face appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated. It's not likely, but it's possible. But a problem-free, no-hassle, blue-sky existence of smooth sailing, don't hold your breath. Problems happen. They happen to rich people, sexy people, educated people, sophisticated people. They happen to retired people, single people, spiritual people, and secular people. But not all people see problems the same way. 
Some people are overcome by problems. Others overcome problems. Some people are left bitter. Others are left better. Some people face their challenges with fear. Others with faith. You don't have a choice about having problems, but you do have a choice about what you do with them. Choose faith. Let's start this morning's service with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved God of people, Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. God of the covenant. In our baptism, you call us to proclaim the calling of your kingdom. Give us the courage you gave the apostles that we may faithfully witness to your love and peace in every circumstance of life. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Our first song is in the Red Hymn Book, number 513.
The first reading this morning is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. A voice said to me, O mortal, stand up on your feet, and I will speak with you. And when he spoke to me, a spirit entered into me and set me on my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. He said to me, Mortal, I am sending you to the people of Israel, to a nation of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants are impudent and stubborn. I am sending you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says God, the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they shall know that there has been a prophet among them. This is the word of the Lord. And the second reading this morning is from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 2 through 10. I know a person in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up in his third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that such a person, whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows was caught up in the paradise and heard things that are not to be told, that no mortal is permitted to repeat. On behalf of such a one, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. But if I wish to boast, I will not be a fool, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think better of me than what is seen in me or heard from it or from me, even considering the exceptional character of the revelations. Therefore, to keep me from being too elated, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I appealed to the Lord about this, that it would leave me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is made perfect in weakness. So I will boast all the more gladly of my weakness, so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities for the sake of Christ. For whenever I am weak, then I am strong. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please rise as you are able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 1. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph, and not this carpenter, and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor, except in their hometown, and among their own kin, and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, Whatever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, 
Shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. This is the gospel of our Lord. Good morning. Good morning. So nice to be able to come to church and visit with you guys from now, from, for now. So I missed all of you in person, and having to watch online is great, but it's better to be in person here. So um, my message is going to be about a few holy moments that I've had recently in the last six months or so, and I wanted to share a few of those. Uh, first of all, um, a couple weeks ago, Pastor Bob was here, and probably about two, three weeks ago, and he did the worship service and, and led us with communion, and I happened to be wearing my hat, and his wife looked at the hat, and she looked at that, and I had mentioned that I brought Mike to, to church today, and if you can't see, this says Myron Construction on it, and she looked at me, and she said, did your husband work at Myron? And I said, yes. And she said, Bob did. And she says, Bob, come here. So Pastor Bob comes over by me, and she says, look at Jackie's hat. And he looked at my hat, and he says, and, he, and I said, did you work at Myron? And Pastor Bob said, yes, he did. One of his careers was working at Myron, and he poured concrete. And I said, well, my husband was Mike Suring. And Bob, Pastor Bob says, I know him very well. And I work with him on quite a few uh, projects. So that was really kind of cool to sit and listen to the different things that he had to say about Mike. But that is kind of what my journey has been these last six months of um, finding those holy moments in some, mess, in some areas where you didn't think that you would have a holy moment. So I just wanted to share some of my stories with you today. Kindness. Smiles. Giving. Thoughtfulness. Joy. Patience. Comfort. And peace. These are only some of the traits that the medical field personnel have. Many of you have been praying for me the last few months. Thank you. I never thought that I would be on a cancer journey, as others have been. Getting the phone call that you have cancer is something I do not wish upon any of you. However, I've had a wonderful experience so far. The medical team has been working with me are awesome. As I waited for surgery on January 29th, I heard all the young people talking. And when I say young, I mean young. Some of the nurses looked like they were 19 or 20 years old to these old eyes. They were so pleasant to work with, and they all worked very well together. They complimented each other as they worked. I will get that blanket for you, Courtney. Well, thank you, Heather. Even outside my room, I could hear them assisting each other and complimenting each other as they worked. I had to think, stop and think, the last time I was in such a caring and welcoming place. As I was wheeled into surgery by Ginger, I noticed an older lady waving at me across the hall. And she shouted, good luck, and had the biggest smile on her face. And of course, you know me. I waved back, and then I asked myself, well, do I know her? I couldn't see much without my glasses, so I assumed I didn't know her. And I just said to Ginger, well, that was nice of her to say that to me. And Ginger agreed. Later in the recovery room, as I was waking up, 
I heard the nurses talking amongst themselves. One nurse mentioned that the last patient of the day would not be coming into the recovery room. Someone would need to go and find her husband and let him know that she'll be admitted to the hospital. So that is when I started to pray for her. I really don't know if the lady that waved at me was that same woman. However, I really would like to think it was. God wanted me to meet her, and in my mind, Mike was waving to me. He was telling me, good luck, I'm with you, I love you, and everything will be okay. Wow, what a holy moment that was for me. A few weeks later, I was preparing for a trip to Florida that I had planned with a girlfriend last fall, and the doctor told me to go and rest before I would start my treatments. At the airport, I noticed a woman handing off her son to an airport escort. After a few instructions to the escort and pictures, Jonah waved goodbye to his mother, and he went through security. Later, as I entered the plane, there sat Jonah on the seat next to me. It wasn't a surprise to me for a bit at all. I knew God placed him in that seat. We visited off and on and on the plane while we were waiting to be take, to, for takeoff. He was excited to go to Florida and meet his friends, Mike and Sandy. This was his first time on a plane by himself. Then later on, he asked me, he says, do you go to church? And I said, oh, of course I do. I go to St. John's Lutheran Church in Marion. And I sat there very proudly. He told me all about how he had just moved from, to Green Bay from Michigan. He was looking for a Baptist church in that area. He made me chuckle as he said that we all pray to the same God. He doesn't really like the Catholic ways, and he said, no one should have to ask the Pope or others for forgiveness. Only God can forgive us. I sat there and I listened to this 27-year-old man. He showed me his Bible as he read it, and he was so proud of it. And he sat and read that Bible all the way to Florida. And he was excited to see Mike and Sandy in Florida. There are Christians too, he stated. At one time, I closed my eyes and I rested for a while. And when I woke up, Jonah was there with a picture of me. You can't see it very well. And for a 27-year-old special man, he did very well. And there's a picture of me and my glasses. And my shirt had stripes on it, so there's stripes there. And he said, I signed it for you, too, he said. And uh, so it was just a real special moment to sit by Jonah. And, that. and my girlfriend, Romaine, was with me, and uh, we got off the plane that day. She said, God, isn't that strange that he was sitting by you? <laughs> and I said, no, I knew that there was a reason he was sitting by me. Well, he went on and on, and he asked um, about, uh, uh, he was coming home on Thursday, and when was I coming home? And I said, I'm coming home on Saturday. And uh, so we talked quite a bit. And uh, when are you coming home again? I said, I'm coming home on Saturday. I'm coming home on Thursday. So it was kind of a quiet trip on the way home because my seat was empty on Saturday when I came home. Here I could see the life through a 27-year-old Christian man. Life is so simple to him. Why do we make it so complicated? Let us pray. Dear God, be with us today and every day. Please take care of everyone close and dear to our hearts. 
and give us strength. Amen. Just an update. Um, chemo's, I'm all done with chemo. I had chemo done uh, at the end of May, and my last radiation treatment will be on Wednesday this week. So I will, I am seeing the bottom of the, my, of my treatments, but my journey continues. Thank you. Would you please rise as you are able and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayers. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, creation, and all in need. God of compassion, you offer a peace that passes all understanding. Help us to realize the peace you offer can calm the daily storms of our lives. A peace offered freely, without conditions. God of grace, 
We hear you, Jesus, when you say, come to me and rest. We are weary, worn out, and often sad and overwhelmed. We need our souls revived and the healing touch of the peace and comfort only you can provide. Today we pray for Becky, Braden, Darla, Dave, Denise, Jackie, and James O. Jerome, Jerry, Jerry, Christy, Larry, Lee, Nancy, Nathan, Oliver, Pat, Rachel, Tracy, Scott, Will, and all those we hold in our hearts. God of grace. God of love, we know you love us. The Bible tells us so. We know we are weak and you are strong, and we thank you for being by our side all day long. God of grace, God of love, help us to refuse to stand around and watch the weary and lost cry out for help. Help us to refuse to turn our backs and act like all is well. Help us to make a difference. God of grace, God of compassion, this week help us to listen to the child who wants to tell us about their day. Help us to listen to the pesty neighbor who needs someone to talk to. Help us to listen to our friend who needs us. Help us. God of grace. God of creation, thank you for the warm weather that is needed for our crops to grow the rain that nourishes all creation to new life. May we always remember all good gifts come from you. God of grace, please join me in the last petition. With everlasting thanks and joy for your love and forgiveness, we ask you to be with us till we meet again. This week, help us to take every opportunity to be thankful for the blessings of each day. Help us to pay attention to how best we can be a gift to others. May we approach each day with soul, serving others, uplifting lives. We ask all in the name of your dear Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated and we will have this morning's offering. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for announcements. 
You have the handout that you were given from BART when you came in with all the announcements and just want to point out there will be communion next Sunday on the 14th here in the sanctuary and on the 17th also at Veterans Park. Uh, confirmation and Sunday school are honing in on us very quickly and we ask for all of you to please consider in some way that you may help with those two programs. Um, and handing out Bibles will be on the 8th. Those are for the children who are turning three years old. So if you have a young one like that, please be aware we more than welcome the opportunity to get them started with their first Bible. Um, the Befriender Ministry is going to be explained to us on July 28th. Pastor Mark Zemer, who was with us for many years, will be leading our worship service that day. And he is uh, very much in tune with this particular ministry, and especially for those of us who are without a regular uh, on-site pastor. This is a very worthwhile program for all of us to look at, into. So please, uh, if you can be attended, attending. And also, um, the Zemers, he assured me Claudia is coming too. So they would like to... Uh, meet a lot of old friends. With that, please join me in Old Beautiful for Spacious Skies, number 888. Oh, I'm sorry. Karen, one second. Sorry. Um, Jackie's working in my ears here. Um, Kim Nero's father passed away, um, and his service will be Wednesday? Wednesday. It's Mr. Lehman. Neither one of us can remember for sure his first name, but they live in Tigerton, and he, excuse me? Donald. It is done. Okay. We were sure, but I didn't want to say that out loud for sure. Okay. Anyway, and uh, poor Kim lost her mom not too many months ago, and now her father. So please hold Kim in your prayers. I'm sorry, Karen. Now, song, 888. The blessings of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Everybody have a blessed week. I hope the rain showers kind of skip over us for a few days so we can dry out. But think of all those people in Manawa that are doing some recovery work over there, and we are thankful no lost lives. Have a good week, everybody. Thank you.